I own a bunch of fancy camera gear, yet my favorite camera is my iPhone. The phone is always on me, it's minimal, unobtrusive, and frankly, it's the perfect daily carry pocket camera. However, many people still think that you can't use a phone for serious photography, and in this video, I am gonna prove that theory wrong by giving you a step-by-step -step guide as to how you can get the best photos out of your phone. Personally, I use an iPhone 14 Pro running iOS 17. However, many of the topics that I will cover will apply to other iPhones as well. As for apps, I've tried a bunch of different camera apps, editing apps, and at the end of the day, the best camera app is the default one that comes with the iPhone. And in my opinion, the best editing app is Lightroom. First, let's make some changes in the camera settings. Go to the settings menu and then into the camera section. We will start from the top and only focus on photography related settings for this video. In the format section, leave camera capture as high efficiency, although this doesn't really matter as we're shooting in RAW. Next, you want to switch Apple Pro RAW on. This will allow you to shoot in RAW, give you the best image quality, the highest resolution, and the most flexible file for editing. Under the Pro default, select Pro RAW Max, up to 48 megapixels. This is the highest resolution possible when using the main wide lens. Next, go to preserve settings. This is where you can enable the camera to save specific settings. So next time you open the camera app, those settings will be ready to go. And here you want to turn on the following. Camera mode, macro control, exposure adjustment. This will place a small exposure adjustment button in the top left corner of the screen. You can tap it and adjust the global exposure that will be remembered the next time you open the camera app. Pro Raw resolution control and live photo. Everything else leave off. Switch on volume up for burst. This will make it easier to take a burst. Then in the composition section, turn the grid and level on. You'd want to turn view outside the frame off. This will make sure that the other lenses don't show what it would be like if you were to zoom out, and this will greatly help with composition. Photographic styles won't really apply to raw files, so leave them alone. Prioritize faster shooting is off, lens correction is on, and finally, macro control is also on. When you open the camera app, you have four lens choices. 0.5 is ultra wide. It's great for architecture, for establishing shots, and for very wide landscape photos. Next is the default one times lens. This is the main wide angle lens, which is around 24 millimeters. And it's where you'll get the highest quality image, the highest resolution, and the most natural depth of field as well. This is the lens that you'd also want to be using in low light, if you so wish. And generally, I try to use this camera with this lens the most. This lens is great for establishing shots, environmental portraits, and general point and shoot photography. Now you also have the two times lens. Now this is not a real lens, it's just a digital crop. I know on the iPhone 15, you have even more options there. Personally, I don't use it because if I want to crop, I'll just do it myself when I'm editing. However, it can be useful for compositions. Finally, we have the three times lens, which works out at about 77 mil. Now, even though the quality of this lens is a little bit less, I still use it a lot because it's a fantastic focal length to use in a city. Combined with the one times wide lens, you have one lens which can, can give you the establishing shot, and then you have another lens which can give you a subject photo or a more detailed photo with a bit more compression to give you a more unique set of images. When you're shooting high contrast scenes, you can expose for the highlights by simply tapping on where you want the camera to focus and then dragging your finger up or down. It's worth remembering that this will reset as soon as you move the camera. However, if you press and hold the area where you want to focus, the camera will lock both the focus and the exposure so it will not reset until you exit the app. As for overall exposure, if I'm shooting a high contrast scene, then I wouldn't mind underexposing a little bit just to get a more high contrast shadow and highlight look. However, if I'm shooting a generic well-lit scene, I'll just let the camera do whatever it wants to do. As amazing as these cameras are, both from a hardware and a software perspective, there's no getting around the fact that the sensor is tiny. The smaller the sensor, the less light it can gather. Therefore, the image will be noisier and it will look a little bit flatter and generally like a phone image. So my first bit of actual photography advice when using a phone is to shoot in good light. Now, I know it might mean you can't shoot at night. Well, technically you can, but you will not get the best quality. 
But personally, if you can shoot on a bright sunny day or even a cloudy day, as long as it's bright, you will get the best image quality out of these phones. The second thing you need to consider is where the light is coming from. For the most dynamic image, I would suggest shooting with the source of light coming from behind your subject, or in other words, shooting into the light, or maybe 90 degrees. So let's say if you're shooting straight forward and the light is coming from the side, that's a side lit image. What that will do is it will allow the light to wrap around the subject before going into the camera, therefore give you a more dynamic, a more 3D type look. Whereas if you shoot with the light, you would still get a well lit image. It'll just be a little bit flatter. Now I made a whole separate video about lighting. I will link it down below. However, this is enough to get you going. Also, if you like how some of the photos in this blog have been edited, then may I suggest checking out my Lightroom presets that have specific Apple Pro Raw versions included. I will link them down below if this is something that you're interested in. We've already made some adjustments in the settings to help with composition. However, in this section, I'll give you some general composition tips to get you better photos. First is to make sure you're not always shooting from the usual phone angle. Sure, in some cases that is the best angle, but on many occasions, you could get more interesting photos by changing the perspective. Eye level, chest level, hip level, looking down, looking up, and so on. The next tip is to try and remove as much from your scene as possible. The best photos are minimal with one or two clear subjects. So try to find simple scenes or find ways to simplify them as much as you can using foreground objects or simply getting closer. Finally, check your edges and make sure there's nothing sticking in or looking a little bit messy. Of course, you can fix that with cropping or cloning later in editing, but if you can do that in camera, it'll make your life a little bit easier. Editing is a whole can of worms. I've done a bunch of videos on editing that you can check out under the editing playlist on this channel. However, for this video, I will just stick to the Apple Pro Raw side of things. The first thing you have is the Pro Raw format under the profile section. You can use it to set the master exposure and get the image to the ideal starting point. You don't have much dynamic range to play with, so don't try to make a high contrast scene, low contrast and vice versa. Instead, work with the file that you have and even exaggerate the high or the low contrast aspect of the image. Next up, you want to utilize local masks to create more depth in the image. iPhone files can look a little flat at times, and this is a great way to add depth. Finally, reduce the clarity a touch. iPhone files are notoriously sharp, and this will help give them a softer and more pleasing appearance. All right, that is all for this video. I hope you have found it useful. I hope you've walked away with a bunch of tips and little tricks that you can use to improve your phone photography. Of course, we can go down various rabbit holes on the topics that I've covered. That's for future videos. But for now, this was enough just to get you going and get you using your phone a little bit more. Of course, a phone is not gonna replace a camera, but many times we'll go out without a camera because we don't need to bring a camera. And if something happens, if you have a good light, if you have an interesting subject, you don't really wanna miss an opportunity. And with a phone, you never do. Anyway, leave your comments down below. Maybe you have your own suggestions for improving phone photography, or maybe you hate phone photography so much that you need to let the entire world know how much you dislike it. If so, again, use the comment section for that. But that's it. Uh, we've now arrived in Madrid and I am gonna edit this, publish it, and if I have enough time, go for a walk and hopefully take some photos, probably with a camera alone. Not my phone, because I've done a lot of that in Malta, but I'm waffling. So, see you later and speak soon. Bye.